to keep point on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. We're on a host of radio stations as well across the country and beyond, as a matter of fact. Um, just got noticed as well that a number of you listen to us in the United States and the UK. Thank you so much as well. And I received a number of um, your, your letters as well, as we have it every week and questions about the cathedral and what next as well dotted um, on a number of you as well dr emmanuel jamfi on the matter of okay after these recommendations by charge what happens next um, you say and then this question as well that came in from one other viewer who, who says um says engineer kwame edum also says good morning alfred on the matter of the procurement breaches that uh Shraj has identified in this cathedral matter who is going to pay uh, for them to serve as a deterrent going forward you say thank you very much because it's a long one i'm just summarizing what you wrote, wrote to us also another one here uh from it says good morning after cancellation of the contract who accounts for the monies that have been spent on the cathedral um they have, it says there has to be financial loss to the state and you you write a two-page letter to me on that matter as well so um yes i have quite a number of you on it on the other issues as well so thank you very much for as always letting your voice be heard and also waiting in on the issues that we, we would have to talk about every week here on key point and as always you it is all about you and you have a say in what we say here on, on key point now on the matter of the, the national cathedral this week the Commission on Human Rights and Treaty Justice Shraj released their report on the petition that was sent by Samuel Kudetua Blackwa, the Member of Parliament for the North Town Constituency, the, the chief petitioner on this particular issue. A 165-page report is what was released by Shraj on this matter. Now, a number of issues were raised in that report by Shraj, and it borders on many aspects. The possible prosecution of the Board of Trustees, issues of corporate governance, and the monies that have been spent so far, and indeed the confirmation that, yes, these were public funds spent. And on the vexed matter of, if it is indeed vexed, the identity of Reverend Kosibuating or his alias, and whether that matter was really settled by Shraj's investigation, as was reported earlier, okay, and whether that was even a subject of investigation for Shraj itself to look into per this petition that someone looked at to a black consent. Now, these were the issues that were sent to Shraj to be investigated. First off, whether or not the National Cathedral is a public property or asset. Two, whether or not government and the National Cathedral Board announce to Ghanaians that funds will be raised only from private entities and non-governmental sources as the cathedral was the president's promise to God. Three, whether or not the Supreme Court relied on the statement allegedly made by the Attorney General that no public funds will be used for the National Cathedral project. And take note of who made that statement, said the Attorney General, that no public funds will be used. I'm saying you should take note of this because in another part of the report, the Attorney General is being called upon to investigate something. So really, the questions about the commitment to get to the matter, the end of this particular issue, whether or not procurement processes were duly followed by the National Cathedral of Ghana in the selection and award of the contract for the construction of the cathedral, and also whether or not GNS Talent Center Limited is a registered company with the sole object of talent and skills development training with the Registrar of Companies. Whether or not Victor Kusibuati, a.k.a. Kwabne Dujemfi, holds two different passports, each bearing one of his two names with different dates of birth on each document. And finally, whether or not Victor Kusibuati, a.k.a. Kwabne Dujemfi, put himself in a conflict of interest situation by being member director of the National Cathedral Board, and the same time, a director of GNS Talent Center Limited. Now, the... 
Shraj made a few findings as well, which we're going to get into right now. I'm laying the foundation for this conversation and so that you follow us every step of the way. Take a look at this. On the matter of the issues related to the proponents and that's the respondents of this cathedral investigation, the Minister of Finance was the first respondent, Controller and Accountant General, the National Cathedral Board, Reverend Kusi Boating, also known as Governor Dujenfi, and then GNS Talent Center Limited, the company he owns, and Johans Eshan and Sheila Eshan. All these seven are the, the respondents. There were num some number of recommendations. Samala Kujatua Blakwa is member of parliament for the North Tone constituency. It's the one who petitioned Shraj on this matter, which this 165-page report has been released. We've been combing through it. A number of aspects we'll touch on. Thank you so much for joining us again by, by the demand of the Ghanaian people on this matter. Appreciate you coming through. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning to you. Good morning to the distinguished viewers of TV3. Indeed. Now, you, I've heard you describe this 165-page report by Shah in, in various ways. You say it, it, it falls short of the expectations that we had. I've seen some far-reaching recommendations in there, but generally, what, what, did they take the box for you? Because you petitioned them. Did they take the box for you? Well, thank you very much. Um, whichever way you look at it, this Shraj report is explosive. It is consequential. It is absolutely staggering in terms of the revelations, the confirmations of the matters that I raised that emerged from my parliamentary oversight looking into the National Cathedral Project. And it is important to emphasize that even though I have reservations about portions of the report, which we will come to later in this discussion, at the general level, nobody can downplay the far-reaching consequences of this Shraj report. It is most damning and a great deal of revelation in here is simply shocking. I must also emphasize that the conduct of the respondents in this petition, going at great length to stop Shraj from conducting this investigation, mm. ought to be condemned. You know, they raise questions about the jurisdiction. Yes. So at first, they raised a preliminary objection and said that Shraj should not entertain my petition. And I'm referring to all the respondents in this matter, the Minister for Finance, the Control Accountant General's Department, the National Cathedral Board, Victor Kusibuatin, Kwabna Idu Jemfi, whoever he is, JNS Talent Center Limited, Johannes Eshen, Sheila Eshen, all of them ganged up, saying that there ought not to be an investigation into this matter, which in itself is most Telling. Because if you are clear in your mind that you have acted above board, why did you go to this great length to stop Shraj from investigating this matter? And you will recall that often the criticism about the work I do is that why am I being so active in the media and social media mm -hmm. and all of that? You had key elements at the National Cathedral saying that he should rather subject us to institutions. And we will avail ourselves. Yes. When I did, you go through many pages in this report and you discover the great length they went to prevent an investigation into this matter. Mm. Then when Shraj ruled on their preliminary objections, they failed. I won that one, clearly. Then they decided to raise another matter to place impediments in the way of Shraj, saying that, oh, they have sent me to court. There are portions of the matters I have raised in court. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, Shraj's hands should be stayed. They should back off. Again, they lost that as well. So one of the lessons from this report mm -hmm. is that public officials ought to know 
that they are using our funds, they are using our resources, we pay them. They should not do everything in their power mm -hmm. to prevent the people from knowing the truth and knowing how our resources are being used. So that's the first part that in terms of preliminary observation, I think that it's important to highlight right. and to condemn that attitude and that posture of public officials to always want to prevent investigations, prevent accountability, and, 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 they, and they, they just want to walk away, you know, when really they should be accounting to us. They are serving us. They are acting in our name. So I think that that, 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 that you know, public resources used you know, to, to engage lawyers, to go to great deal, to, to stop Shiraj from investigating this matter and, and, and as it were, dismissing and, and putting aside my petition ought to be condemned in the strongest of terms. Now, having said that, let us come to the findings and I would proceed in two categories. I'll first deal with the general issues, largely on the procurement and value for money matters. And then I'll come to the second issue relating to Victor Kusibuati and Kwabne Edujenfi, which deals with the double identity matter yes. and the conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that demarcation for clarity, you know. So okay. let's come to the summary of key findings. Shiraj has determined, when you go to page 158 of this report, that the National Cathedral of Ghana is a public property held in trust for the Republic of Ghana by the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board. Mm -hmm. Remember that because of the president's communication on this matter, how he first presented this project, he created a maze of confusion. The president said that this was a personal pledge to God and that they were not going to use public funds. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yes. And okay. that they would do everything to mobilize the church, donors, you know, individuals, only for me to discover. You know, this whole thing started when I intercepted documents that apparently on the blind side of all Ghanaians, on the blind side of parliament, in flagrant violation of the constitution, mm -hmm. nobody withdraws taxpayer funds, nobody uses public funds in our country without parliamentary approval. You know, it's mm -hmm. right. The constitution is very clear about the, about the matter. Only for me to, dis dis to, 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 to intercept documents from the Ministry of Finance that apparently Huge sums of taxpayer funds were going into this project, contrary to the claims made that this was a private project. So Shiraj has now determined that, look, this is a public project. The confusion, the inconsistency, the contradictions ought mm. to be you know, put aside. The president stands exposed in terms of what his original intention was about this project. Then two, the board of trustees, directors of the National Cathedral of Ghana are public officers. The public officer, Shraj, has made that clear. You know, that once you accept these appointments and you come and serve on the board, you are a public officer. And that is why the length they went to prevent investigations, to prevent accountability into this matter is most condemnable. Then three, Shraj says, quote, I'm still reading from page 158. Government at the inception of the National Cathedral Project made contradictory statements regarding the source of funding for the construction of the National Cathedral. So the contradictions, the lack of forthrightness, the lack of truth, the lack of sincerity. And one would have thought that a project for, for, for the Almighty, a project for God, if there's any project which should be proceeded upon on the basis of truth, sincerity, mm -hmm. you know, honesty, forthrightness, it should have been this project. And, and I think that those contradictions must be totally condemned by everybody. Then four, Shiraj also determined that the Supreme Court did not rely on the Attorney General's assertion that no public funds would be used for the National Cathedral Project in arriving at his decision in the case of James Kovna Bonfair and the Attorney General. Then five, the contract awarded to Ribadi Company Limited for the construction of National Cathedral was in the sum of 312 million, 394,049 United States dollars and 53 cents. This, this, this is most revealing, because remember that this project 
has started at $100 million, then we're told, or oh, $150 million. The last time they, 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 they made any public statements or that, they said, oh, between $150 to $200 million. And now we know the Shiraji, finance minister said it was going to cost about $400 million, so, and so they were yeah. going to look for additional so, money. So, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 so Shiraj says that the contract to Ribadi, mm -hmm. and note that this is just Ribadi, the contractor. This sum does not include the monies that have gone to the consultant. Mm -hmm. and, and remember that the consultant has engaged in a lot of inflationary pricing, and I'm referring to David Ajay, where even, just you saw the documents I published mm -hmm. not too long ago, where just a variation, a slight variation, to add a restaurant to his original design, he charged us $5.7 million. A restaurant to, to, yes, to, to, to the, because when he the did, cathedral yes, site? Yes, when he did the original design, it didn't come with a restaurant. That's a restaurant they said they'll be serving food from Israel and, uh, and, and all those <laughs> things. And, and, that, and that restaurant variation alone, alone cost, cost us $5.7 million. The design, not just the building. No, not the building, just the design. But you know there's nothing at the building, yeah. the, at the site. Just it's, the $5.7 it's, it's million dollars for the design of yes. the, exactly. the yes. restaurant. Yes. Okay. So it is important to, 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 to take note of that, mm -hmm. that just Rebadi, and remember that Rebadi is a joint venture of Rizani, the Eka, Babisoti, and the Simone. They came together to um, uh, set up this uh, joint venture. Six. Shraj says that the contract was awarded by the Board of Trustees to the contractor without recourse to the concurrent approval by the Central Tender Review Committee. A key requirement of the Procurement Act having regards to the contract sum. So you see mm -hmm. the, the, the legal breaches. The Central Tender Review Committee's concurrent approval was not sought. Seven, the National Cathedral of Ghana did not strictly comply with the rules of public procurement provided for under Act 663, as amended by Act 914, when it purported to select and award the contract for the construction of the National Cathedral to Ribade Limited. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you believe that? Such a huge project, over $312 million to the contractor alone. People just sat in their offices and as if this was some private, you know, child's play, mm -hmm. and just awarded contract without recourse to the Public Procurement Act. Now, this is a confirmation, if you recall, of the RTI request I filed at the PPA many years ago, asking if this project had received their support. And they said, no, they knew nothing about it. They, did not, they have not granted yes. approval. This is a clear confirmation, because I attached all of that evidence, mm -hmm. and Correct. Shraj went ahead to talk to the PPA, the board, the management, and all of that. And they have mm -hmm. confirmed clearly that the award to the contractor rebadi. And you see, what is, what is quite shocking about this is that when you go through this report, the 165-page report, mm -hmm. the Board of Trustees sought to create the impression that, oh, you know what? Uh, when it comes to the contractor, uh, we allowed them to just move to site and started paying them because you know, we thought that it was a private project. Uh, and yeah. so once it's a private project, you know, but, but no. you are using public funds. You said and the thinking was that it was a private project, but the Shark yes. report is saying clearly that, that this that, is a public... That it's a public project. And it is... And then Shrai says, when you read this, that Shrai says that that response from the National Cathedral Board of Trustees and the Secretariat is contradictory and smacks of double standards because when it came to the award of the consultant, this same board used the PPA. They went for approval mm -hmm. in awarding the consultancy to David Ajay, even though Shrai says that the, the portion of the law they used was clearly an abuse. They used emergency, the emergency clauses, mm -hmm. you know, saying that this was an emergency. So Shrai is saying that how come, when it comes to the consultancy, for that one, you were minded to respect our procurement laws. That's a single source exactly. consultancy. You, you, th this was reproduced in the charge report. So exactly. just for the benefit of our viewers, we're going to put the single source um, request for the appointment of a consulting firm. It's, 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 it's there and it says, yeah. we make reference to, you. and this is a letter that was written by the finance minister first, yeah. and then the chief of staff also responded. Yes. That we make reference to your letter 
date that uh, goes on and on, the, the 10th December 2018 on the above subject. That is request for approval to use single source for the appointment of a consulting firm. At the board technical committee meeting on Thursday 13 December 2018, the board granted approval to Office of the President in accordance with Section 72.5B of Act 63 as amended to engage Sir David Dajai and associate as a lead consultant, construction and supervision for the construction of National Cathedral at a total cost of $23.75 million. That's what is in there. Yeah. And the Office of the President is, however, requested to negotiate for a 10% trade discount on this $23.75 million on the contract sum prior to the award of the contract. The approved contract sum is therefore $21.37 million. You are required to ensure that all documentation regarding this procurement is appropriately kept to facilitate future procurement and tax audits. So this contract sum of $21.37 million is what was supposed to be paid to David Ajayi yeah. as consultant yeah. through the sole sourcing at the PPA. Yes. So... So, the, so Shraj says clearly that in engaging the consultant, you are minded to respect the PPA law, mm -hmm. even if it was done inappropriately. Mm -hmm. In other words, there was really no basis to use the single source provision and to claim that this is an emergency. Because if you read the law, there are very clear grounds, a limited, very narrow scope mm -hmm. for applying that provision of the, of, the, of the Public Procurement Act relating to emergencies. But Shraj says, so you, let's grant you that. Okay. You were minded to do that when it comes to the consultant. How come when it came to the contractor, Ribadi, you did not attempt at all to go through the PPA? And, and Shraj says that they do not find their excuse tenable. That bothers on the legality of the contract. Yes. And so, and, and that brings me to finding number eight. Shraj determines that the contract awarded Ribadi Company Limited for the construction of the National Cathedral is illegal mm -hmm. and void ab initio. Can you believe that? This yes. is explosive. We have that aspect of that report, this, the this, legality of the contract. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is explosive. So remember that $58 million has been spent on this project, on an illegality. The last time we asked the finance minister in parliament to give us the full breakdown, mm -hmm. the total expenditure, yes. it amounted to $58 million. We, we have over 339 million Ghana cities at the exchange rate then. So, can you believe, imagine what 339 million Ghana cities can do. And this is the what Akufado we, Baumia government has spent that on an illegality. I mean, we must demand a refund of all of our monies. The $58 million. Of course. At the exchange rate of 5.2 CDs to the Absolutely. dollar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when you read page 113 of this report. Shraj carried out a field inspection. And they were shocked. They were shocked at what they saw. I'll come to those portions. And that, the portion that you just read is, let's just read it for the benefit of our, uh, our, our listeners and the viewers as well, on the matter of the legality of the contract. Let's put it on the screen. It says, yeah. the contract was void. That is, yes, it was illegal. Illegal and right void. Right from the beginning. Right from says, the beginning. ab initio, right from the beginning, for being entered into contrary to the mandatory provisions of the Procurement Act, Act 63, mm -hmm. as amended. The Board of the Public Procurement Authority should intervene to cancel the contract for the construction of the National Cathedral between the National Cathedral and Ribade Company as it has the power to do so under the Procurement Act. Yeah. So, really, will, will the PPA, is the PPA bound to do this, this particular recommendation? Of course. They have to. If, if, they, if, they, if they do not, as citizens, we can take them on. And he said it could what? Attract international embarrassment. That's yeah. another aspect of the report yeah. um, that, that you see there as well. Yeah. So to have all of these colossal, staggering amounts of money spent on an illegality, then you come to finding number nine, which is also explosive. Schwarz says that the procurement breaches that occasion the award of the contract to Rebadi Company Limited raise reasonable suspicion of corruption and corruption-related offenses. 
Damn it. Then you see, when you come to page 163 of this report, where Shiraj makes further observations, Shiraj says that, quote, also of crucial importance is the amount spent so far on the National Cathedral. Mm -hmm. Our investigation showed that as of 31st May 2022, the, an amount of 225 million 962,500 Ghana cities described as seed money had been released for the construction of the National Cathedral per SB9. This sum of money has been expended according to SB9 on site preparation, contractors mobilization, US fundraising, mm -hmm. consultants, and symposia. The stated sum of money is no small amount. Public interest dictates that there ought to be value for money mm -hmm. in project execution. Unfortunately, this commission has no expertise to determine whether there has been value for money considering the project remains in the same state. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, the commission recommends that the Auditor General should conduct a forensic audit on the construction of the National Cathedral project from its inception to date to ascertain whether money's release for its construction have been properly utilized. Damn And the Auditor General, we are going to follow up mm -hmm. to insist that he goes to conduct the, 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 the forensic audit. Because you see, when you come to page 113 of this report, the report on the, the field inspection, as already indicated, the commission conducted field investigations at the site of the National Cathedral Project on 15 August 2023. The purpose of the visit was to ascertain the true state of affairs of the project and also interview witnesses. At the locus, the team of investigators met one Samuel Ofusu Ampufu, a quantity surveyor of Ribade Company, who granted the commission access to project site, but refused to be interviewed. Can you believe that? <laughs> Information gathered from the field was as follows. The construction of the project had come to a halt. Yes. And, and, and I have placed on record mm, that this project has been on hold for 31 good months. 31 months. 31 good months. And yet, and yet, we are paying people every month. I have been demanding that the payment should stop. The last time you heard what Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi said, the respected Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi, you know, who... I hold in high esteem, but uh, conduct in these matters. I was shocked when she said that my demand is not, you know, uh, something they are going to work with. They are going to continue to be drawing down salaries. One of the things that I expect moving forward after this right report, stating clearly that this is an illegality, is that the continuous payments, which have gone on for 31 months, where no work has been going on, those payments ought to stop immediately. I don't expect them to receive their November salary. I don't expect December... December salaries to go. Mm -hmm. Because look, I've looked and, at and the organogram of the National Cathedral, the board, the secretariat. Look, it's such an elaborate organogram. You, see, you have no idea the number of people working there. It's, right. it's, it's a tax guzzler. They are receiving millions. And you see, I ask a fundamental question. If this is your private project, private project mm -hmm. in your private life, you are not using taxes, and you have some difficulty your private project, you are building a house. The project is not continuing. Are you going to keep paying the mason, paying the plumber, the electrician? Are you, I, the foreman, are you going to continue paying them for 31 months? Why do we do things with public funds that we would never even contemplate, never even imagine, if we were using private funds, if we were using private resources? I mean... Here, we, we, we have Shraj confirming that this project has been on, on hold for many, many months. And yet, you have members of the board defending that they should keep receiving salaries. I mean, President Akufwado, didn't you tell Ghanaians that you are coming to protect the public purse? Is this how we protect the public purse? Already, you have spent $58 million on an illegality. We say we want to salvage what is left, at least. You know, the, the, the little left of the battered public purse in this bankrupt, insolvent economy, where even people who have worked, have you listened to the doctors? Have you listened to lecturers? Their conditions of service are not being reviewed. Recently, CTAC embarked on the longest strike ever, the lecturers at the colleges of education. You have had NAPCO trainees who have not been paid for many months and are at home. People who have worked, have not been paid, are not being paid. You saw mortuary workers on strike not too long ago. You know, so how is it that people who are carrying out essential services 
are not being paid. And then people who are at a project site which has come to a halt for 31 months on money. an illegality, they are still drawing salaries. Look, they are, they are, we are, are going to demand. Funds. And, and look, we have, our caucus has served notice. The next budget approval process, we will not approve any further allocation, salaries, allowances for this national criteria program. Because what it will mean is that we are also complicit. We are engaged in an illegality. Because charge is very clear. And, 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 and the field report continues that we noticed the construction of the project had come to a halt. Equipment and materials ranging from three mounted cranes, piles of iron rods, basement structure, on a dark hole, mm -hmm. dark hole, with a concrete floor, some few pavement blocks, and some metal components were seen lying at the site. Photographs, the following images were taken when the team visited at the site of the National Cathedral on 15 August 2023, and they attached the photographs. Yes, that's what you see on the screen yeah, there. Yeah, oh yeah. So mm -hmm. those who are out there say, oh, on this National Cathedral, there's a lot of propaganda by Antichrist and Sambalat and Tobias and uh, people who will never make it to heaven. All those religious blackmail that they engage out there. These, these, these are the findings. Now, very, very damning findings. Let me, let me, let me, quickly, let me quickly read this. Uh, why you look for it? On the matter of on the... On page 163. Yes, on the matter of the, the summary of the disbursement of the seed money. Yeah. And we, we, look, we, we're going to put that... Because I took quite some time yeah. to run through this 165-page report of, of charge on your petition. Now, this is the summary of the seed money that was disbursed. We're going to put that on the screen so yeah. you know exactly what this money was spent on. And also, my other guests are going to be joining in, as we go on. First off, based on the Shrag report, these are the details. Take a look at this. Site preparation, 5,130,988. Contractors mobilization, 157,445,517. Then you have fund raising activities. And you see, this, this was supposed to raise funds, but yeah. they spent almost <laughs> 800,000 Ghana cities on that. Consultancy, that's where David Ajayi comes in with yeah. 61.79 million Ghana cities. Two major symposiums at Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel, 790,845. A grand total of 225,962,000. That's 225 million. 962,500. Site preparation works. Then they mentioned the consultants, ABP consult, relocation of sewage, Department of Parks and Gardens, cutting and pruning of trees, interplants, it goes on and on and on. And that amounts to over 5.1 million. And then Rebadi Limited, that's a constructor's mobilization. It says 71.45 million. Rebadi Limited issuance of LOA. Uh, that's letters of agreement and final negotiation. It goes on, and the part payment for that is 25 million. We see there. This I is mean, the breakdown that they give I mean, to it. And, 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 and can you believe that after all of this, Shraj said that all they saw was a dugout? And you say that's the most expensive hole. The most expensive hole in the world. And now when it rains in the rainy season, it becomes the most expensive swimming pool in the world. 58 million. You know what 58 million dollars can do? You know what other countries are doing with 58 million dollars? I mean, it's, it's, it's most shocking that public funds will be so dissipated. And that is why Schwarz concludes, if you read page 163, it says, the commission further recommends for further investigation and possible prosecution of the board of trustees of the National Cathedral, mm -hmm. who superintended over the award of the contract to Rebadi Company Limited, in this regard of Act 663, as amended, these breaches of the procurement laws have the potential of causing international embarrassment to the country, considering its international status and that of Rebadi Company Limited. And you see, on this matter, when you come to page 137 of the report, Shraj has provided details of the people that should be investigated and prosecuted. He says that Dr. Polopokumensa, the executive director, 
and he goes on to list the board of trustees, eminent clergy. Now, Alfred, let me be very, very honest with you. I have a great deal of sympathy for this eminent clergy. Why? Because I take the view that they were deceived by President Akufuadu. They were misled. Because in this matter, everything begins and ends at the doorstep of President Akufuadu. Look at eminent clergy who have served this country so well. Mm -hmm. Distinguished themselves, represented some of the most renowned congregations and religious groups in this country. Now here we are, they are faced with possible prosecution. Per the Shraj recommendation. Per the Shraj recommendation. I take the view that President Akufuado is the one mm -hmm. who must be made to pay for this mess. He should be made to refund the monies to us. He must take responsibility for all the additional monies that we have to cough up as a country to pay compensation claims. So when I see this largely, respect, apart from the double identity uh, chap who will be coming to discuss soon, all of these eminent clergy, when I go through Bishop Dakeward Mill's resignation letter, I have a lot of sympathy for this eminent clergy. Bishop Dakeward Mills revealed in his resignation letter that they did not have a say on the choice of the consultant. The president told them that he has his own consultant. And that's why it was single source. That's why the procurement laws were breached under emergency provisions. Bishop Dakeward Mills has revealed that when it comes to even the site, the location, they didn't have a say as a board. And he writes clearly, emphatically, that it appeared to them that there was another board somewhere, the real McCoys, who were taking decisions somewhere. Except that the only thing you will say is that when this eminent clergy discovered this, as revealed in Bishop Dakeward Mills' resignation, they should all have resigned and blocked. Only Pastor Mensah Utabil left, Bishop Dakiwad Mills resigned, Reverend Isud Anaba resigned, and Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Only these four left. Perhaps all the others should have quickly realizing what was going on. So you see that now, Bishop Dakiwad Mills has been vindicated. Reverend Isud Anaba and Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, who wrote, demanding a forensic audit. You see, they have been vindicated by this Shraj report. I see that unfortunately, Shraj. unfortunately, Shraj is looking at all those who were on the board. So whether you resign or not, if you look at page 137 of the report, they have listed all the names here. Apostle mm -hmm. Professor Pokunina, Archbishop Charles Pamabaku, Most Reverend Bishop Justice of Fairkrufi, Most Reverend Professor Manuel Mate, Most Reverend T.K. Awachi Pratt, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan William, Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi, Bishop Dake Ward Mills, Reverend Isud Anaba, Reverend Victor Kusi Boatin, Mm -hmm. And they ought to have added Kwabna Edu Jenfi, you know, at Reverend Dr. Reverend Dr. Frimpo Manso. I am quite surprised, though, that I don't see the Attorney General's name here, because he was on the board so, uh, and resigned. Time. Yes, he was also on the board. Godfrey Dami was on the board. So, Shraj, your, your list is not comprehensive. So, he was a secretary? Yes. No. Yes. To, to the board at yes. some point? To, yes. No, but this was captured in the Shraj report. No, his name was mentioned in the Shraj report. As you, as you have it. No, um, I don't see it here. If you no, go not, to... Not, not the list of the persons yes. who are supposed to be prosecuted. Yes, but yes. At some point, yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, Shiraj confirms that he was there. He was, he was on the board until he resigned. Yes, so Shiraj confirmed that. So when you are listing the, the board members, why are you focusing on only the reverend ministers and you leave out the attorney general? It's one of the reservations I have about this report. All those who were on the board should, be, should, should list it Including fully and, and comprehensively. Yeah, to the secretary, to the board, and comprehensively provide that list. So, look, the point I'm making more fundamentally is that President Akufuado has misled these priests. He has tarnished their image. It is he. You remember some of them, even priest sermons, Nicholas and Kamenei, are they saying that, look, the president has assured us that this is a private project. We are not going to use public funds. 
So pipe down with your criticism. You remember, mm -hmm. if viewers Google, they'll see it. A number of these priests saying that, look, president has assured us. So it is the president who has created this conundrum, this quagmire mm, for this eminent clergy who we all hold in high esteem. See what President Kufado has done. Now look, another aspect which President Kufado must be made to pay for is the looming judgment debts and compensation claims. Judgment debt? Yes. As we speak, a private company called Waterstone Realty, the apartment complex, was demolished. They are in court, demanding $6 million. As we speak, the Malians, the Malian government, they are waiting for their full compensation. The Malian ambassador's residence was demolished. Comsys IT firm was demolished. Scholarship secretariat was demolished. The passport head office was demolished. Judges bungalows demolished. Shraj bungalows. The Judicial Training Institute. I have seen a formal request from the judiciary saying that to replace the Judicial Training Institute, they need $50 million. Who is going to pay for that? The, the Judicial Training Institute. The Judicial Training that Institute, was yes. $50 million. Yes, $50 million. Be... Former CJ, his, his lordship, Enin Yeboa, signed those documents, did that work. And they need $50 million. Who is going to pay for all of these replacements? So look, this matter, I think that the reverend ministers have become scapegoats. The, 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 the person who must be held responsible, who must be surcharged, who must be made to pay, not only for the $58 million, but the hundreds of millions of dollars coming out of compensation claims, compensation demands for the demolition of properties, is President Akufwadu. And, 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 and I, as I said, look, let us all pray for this eminent clergy. I have a lot of sympathy for them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and perhaps for those of them who resigned and stated in writing clearly mm -hmm. their reservations which they had, they had, you know, raised mm -hmm. at the board level continuously, probably have some, 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 some good defense. You know, but but well, but, but, but but honestly, but it's captured in the, in the and these are the board the board members who we'll put yeah. them on the screen right now, as you read. Yes, because um, this recommendation for the prose possible prosecution of the board members of the National Cathedral, Dr. Paul Opoko Mensa, Executive Director. Yes, a Apostle Professor Opoko Nina, Chairman, and then you have Archbishop Charles Pababakal. Metropolitan Catholic Archbishop, Cape Coast Vice Chair. They are still, they are still seven. Most Reverend Bishop of Kofi, Anglican Archbishop Emeritus is a member. The famous Right Reverend Professor Emmanuel Mate, former moderator of the Presbyterian Church, also a member. Most Reverend T.K. Awoke Pratt, presiding Bishop Methodist Church, also a member. The Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, presiding Archbishop and General Overseer, Action Chapel International, and he's resigned. He was a member. Reverend Dr. Joyce Ayi, Executive Director, Salt and Light Ministries, still a member. Bishop Daki Ward Mills, Presiding Bishop Lighthouse, resigned. Reverend Isudanaba, resigned. Reverend Victor Kusi, Watin, your good friend, um, member and secretary, still a, a member. Reverend Dr. Frimpon Manson, General Superintendent, Assemblies of God, is, is also still a member. Yeah. See, yeah, see what President Kufado has done to this eminent clergy. See what he's done. Deceived them, misled them. Told them that he won't use public funds. They should come. It's a private project. He made a personal pledge to God. They should come and help him fulfill his personal pledge. See what he's done to them. See what President Kufado has done. So you said so. So this fifty-eight million dollars that we, we we saw published. And we have the breakdown of that 58 million. A chunk of it also went into the payment of consultancy to, yes. to, to David Ajayi. That's separate from the, the compensation that has to be paid to all the people who own buildings and structures at the cathedral site. Yes. Because some demolition had to take place. And I do know that a number of the judges' bungalows were also located there. Yes. How many? Yes. There are about 14 of them. 14, 14 judges' 14. bungalows yes. were there. And yeah. that were also demolished. Yes. And so we had to look for another place for and the judges. We have already lost taxpayer funds, renting accommodation for them. Millions of Ghana cities. And then we are building replacement bungalows for them. Millions of Ghana cities. Who pays for all of that? And so one of the 
she, if you like, shortcomings of this Shrash mm -hmm. report is who should pay? Who should refund these monies? That's a question that came from Dr. Kwame Asante, who, yeah. who is one of the letters I received. So in the midst of all this, who should be held accountable who should for be held? this? And I insist, I insist that President Akufuado, he must be made to pay for the compensation claims to refund our $58 million. And he should go and cover that hole over there. He should be, he should be, he should be, he should be held liable squarely. President Kofado should be made to pay the $58 million. Absolutely. And the, absolutely. the cost of compensation. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and, and I say that, look, these clergymen have become scapegoats because some of them wrote. Have you read Bishop Dake Wadmill's resignation yes. letter? Yes. Yeah, you can put it up for viewers mm -hmm. to see. Bishop Dake Wadmill said that, look, we have been raising concerns. He said that at the time he was resigning, mm -hmm. we had spent $30 million. And all he sees is a pit. Bishop Dake Wadmill says that, look, he has done far more, built magnificent edifices. And we know that. You've gone to the Kodesh and other places. You've gone to the, 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 the Abri Mountains. For far less. All of these eminent priests, they have built magnificent edifices for the worship of the Almighty. For far less. And they were raising concerns. You, mm -hmm. you read the, the resignation letters of Reverend Isud Anaba and uh, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Demanding a forensic audit for years. They were ignored. They were rather being attacked. Now here we have it. So honestly, I'm full of sympathy for this eminent clergy. They have just been misled, misused, and abused by the president.